Hey there, this lesson is going to go ahead and talk about basic addition. So we will look at adding zero to numbers and we will also look at the associative and commutative properties of addition. So to start, addition is the most basic arithmetic operation. In the next unit, we will look at how to add fractions and decimals, but in this unit, we will focus only on integers, which are positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers, and the number zero. So to start, we, we are going to look at adding zero. So an expression which consists of the addition of a number a, which represents any number that we're working with, and the number zero always equals the number a. For example, a plus zero equals a. So this is just saying that any number that we start with, when we add zero, we end up with the same number we began with. So we can evaluate these three examples here. So four plus zero is just going to be four. When you add zero, you get the same number. Negative eight plus zero is still negative eight. And 72 plus zero is still 72. Additionally, we have addition of negative numbers. So with addition of negative numbers, we want to consider the following expression. So if we start with a plus negative b, as the expression we are looking at. In this case, you are required to add a negative b to a positive a, to a positive value, positive number. Adding a negative number is the same as subtracting the same number in its positive form. So what I mean by that, if we are taking the expression that we started with, a plus negative b, this is the same as a minus b. So plus a negative essentially is the same as just subtraction. So we can use the same process on these examples here. So if we see three plus a negative number, negative two in this case, we can just write three minus two and then evaluate that. So three minus two would give us one. On this one, 11 plus negative nine is the same as 11 minus nine, which is two. 108 plus negative 97. Again, we can just do 108 minus 97. And when we do that, we get 11. Additionally, we are going to look at the commutative and associative properties of addition. The commutative and associative properties of addition allow you to manipulate mathematical expressions that include only addition signs in a way that may simplify the process of finding the solution. So both of these properties can help you with some mental math in terms of what numbers might actually work better or easier together when you're adding. So for example, with the commutative property of addition, it states that you can reorder the terms in the expression in any order without affecting the value of the expression. And again, this works anytime you have only addition in the expression. So for example, the expression below, 98 plus 568 plus 1 plus 2,234, this can be rewritten or reordered in any way that you like because it is all addition between the four numbers. And so I could rewrite this and reorder it in any way that you would like. So 1 plus 98 plus 568 plus 2234, or 2234 plus 568 plus 98 plus 1. Again, in any order that you would like, and it will come out to be the same answer every time. And that will work with any expression where you have any number of numbers, but only addition in the expression. The associative property of addition states that you can group terms of the expression together in any combination, therefore performing operations in different orders and still reaching the exact same correct result. So as a reminder, one thing I do want to point out, anytime we have a set of parentheses in an expression, we want to make sure that we evaluate that portion or that part first before we do anything else. So we have 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9, and they have 1 plus 3 in parentheses. So what that means is that we would evaluate this part first. The way that this is set up, 1 plus 3, if we evaluate it as it's written, 1 plus 3 is first and we get 4. Then we would go ahead and do 4 plus 6, those first two here. 4 plus 6 is going to give us 10. 
and then we add on that last number, 10 plus 9 is 19. So our answer would be 19. Now I do want to point out with the associative property, we are able to write this or group this in different ways. So starting again with what we started with in my example right above here, one plus three is in parentheses. I could change around where those parentheses are and I could, for example, do three plus six instead. And that three plus six, while it's not changing the order of how the numbers are written, one, then three, then six, then nine, like commutative property did, it is changing what you're actually adding together first because of where the parentheses are at. So when those parentheses go here, then that indicates we need to do this part first. So three plus six is nine, and we still have the one at the beginning and the nine at the end. So when we do that, we get nine there in the middle, and then we can go on and we can do one plus nine. And that one plus nine at the beginning of this expression gives us 10. And then again, we can add in the nine, 10 plus 9 gives us 19 as our answer, which is the same if we did it in the original format of how it was given to us. So either way worked. That is an alternative that is allowed based on the associative property of addition. Another alternative would be putting two sets of parentheses here. So again, because this is fully addition between the four numbers that we have here, we could do 1 plus 3 and we could do six plus nine and get two numbers and then add those two numbers together. So one plus three is going to give me this four that's right here. And then six plus nine is going to give me the 15 that's right here. Then we just add those two numbers together. And again, we still get 19. So there are many ways that you can add numbers together using the associative property and actually even the commutative property at the same time, which we'll see down here in just a second. And depending on the numbers that you have, it may be helpful to use the commutative and associative properties to simplify an expression. So I'm going to start with the same problem we just had for the associative property example above. 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9, where right now only the 1 plus 3 is in parentheses. I could do two things here. I could change the grouping, the sets of parentheses, which would be associative property. And I can change the order of the numbers, which would be the commutative property. So I can do both of those because, again, we only have addition across all four numbers. So when I do that, 1 plus 3, instead of putting those two together, I might look at this and see, well, 1 and 9 make 10. That's a really easy set of numbers, pair of numbers to add together. So here, 1 plus 9, I'm going to go ahead and group those together instead. So I'm not only changing the order, but also what is grouped in those parentheses. So this is a mixture, a combination of commutative and associative property. And we have 3 plus 6 over here, the leftover two that I haven't added together yet, and I'm going to put those together. So when I do that, I do 1 plus 9, which gives me 10, plus 3 plus 6, which gives me 9. And then I can go ahead and add my 10 and my 9 to give me 19. And as you remember, that's what we got every time we used the associative property as well to group different numbers together. And then when we added in the commutative property of changing up the order in addition to changing up the grouping of the numbers, we still got 19. So in summary, when we add 0 to a number, that number stays the same. When we are adding a negative number, it is the same as subtracting that number, but in the positive form. And finally, with the associative and the commutative properties, the commutative property allows us to take a group of numbers that we are adding and change up the order, and we can add it in any order. Associative property allows us to take a set of numbers that we are adding and change up the grouping, the sets of parentheses that tell us which numbers we add together first.